It is the most consistently inconsistent entertainment podcast out there, the Ken and Culture Podcast. It is once again another episode. So let's see. On today's show, what are we talking about? Uh, well, first of all, how how are you, Professor Plank? It's good to see I'm you. I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. It's been a, it's been a while. Welcome back, been a man. Long time. Welcome back. How was your hiatus? It was. Uh, I don't know. I didn't do shit. So yeah, I guess it was shit. pretty good. Oh come yeah, on! I didn't do shit. You're always doing something. Uh, I was breathing. Okay. <laughs> okay, that sounds productive. That sounds productive. So, um, man, where do we start? Where do we start? Uh, I don't know. There's a lot to catch up on. Yeah, honestly, um, we could do. Hold on. We could Thank do. You. I needed that. Sorry, I was I was talking to my girlfriend because she turned the light on for me because she knows I can't see because I'm blind. Um, mm. <laughs> so, all right, um, let's let's start off with something light, man. Let's start off with uh, some light racism, if you will. Um, <laughs> light racism. <laughs> uh, yeah, Aiden, local <laughs> local black streamer Aiden Ross, who mm. recently <laughs> who recently moved to kick. Uh, was tweeting the other day yeah 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 well i mean recently to the show okay recently recently to the show because it's not it's not recent (laughs) i'm sorry none of this shit is recent. none of this shit is recent but this piece of news is recent um he was tweeting the other day that he was hurt about the uh for apparently 40 million dollar contract that kai sinat and i show speed turned down in order to have a uh a show coming directly to kick so i find that very interesting and this is why i say this is light racism because uh this is clearly colorism uh both of these young men uh wanted to physically attack this young man aiden ross uh oh. savior of the internet if you will the savior of the internet, savior yeah. of the internet yeah he's really trying to do he's really just trying to be out there you know what i'm saying he's really trying to do the things the rest of us wish we could do, like stream porn on the internet, you know, and of jerk course. off with our fans. So, you know, That's a great idea. how do you feel about this? I love that. How do I feel about Aiden Ross? Aiden Ross, he just called an NBA player a thug. I don't know if this is the guy we should be like looking at for anything, but I don't, I don't think anyone gives a fuck about what Aiden Ross thinks, unironically. Uh oh. Hold on. Are we lie. supposed to? I lost you for a second there. Your whole your whole sentence broke up. I couldn't hear it. Oh, um. He said he called him a th- who he who did he call a thug? He called Ja Morant. Oh. The NBA player a thug because he had a weapon out. Oh, on Instagram yeah, 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 Or allegedly had a weapon out. Oh no, he did. He did. There's hardcore screenshots. Did, yeah, yeah, yeah. He did. I mean, yeah. there's still an investigation, so. Yeah, which is interesting because I think the biggest part of the investigation is wondering how he got it into what state was that i think you got no this is a different incident this oh this is a com- he wow. had it on um instagram live Again, oh that's right and he was just flashing it yeah, yeah, yeah. buddy he flashed it for a second because his friend turned the camera yeah buddy really does not first of all let me ask you a question if you had a homie who was worth millions of dollars right would you oh 200 million dollars 200 million no, not a couple about of 200 million. <laughs> not a couple yeah, billion dollars 200 specific not a little bit of money so you have a friend who's worth. I'm gonna be honest with you. If it was you and me, and I saw you doing some stuff like that, man, I'm I'm taking your phone away. I'm taking your phone away. You blocking you blocking the bag for the rest of us. Honestly, I, it's more likely to be you. And if it was you, I'd probably <laughs> smack the shit out of you. I'm not doing I'm not doing that on Instagram Live. <laughs> you don't think so? Nah, man. I gotta protect the bag, man. You think I'm doing you that? Doing that shit on Daily Motion? Where are you doing that at? <laughs> <laughs> on kick, duh. Oh, <laughs> with okay, Aiden, yeah. yeah, I'm gonna be over there with Aiden Russ talking about you know how it is. I'm out in these streets mm. <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, I don't, I don't see how a multi millionaire. Yeah, I don't see how a multi millionaire could be a real shooter. That doesn't, that does, does you don't some, think so? something about that doesn't sit right. Like, job may have been in the streets like that, you know, in between basketball practice in high school. You know, he may have been hanging out with the thugs and the demons, but he's not one of them. Mm. He's not allowed to be. I mean, he probably was at one point in time. He was an aspiring one, but, you know. <laughs> an I, aspiring shooter? Yeah, an aspiring shooter. But then, you know, after getting a successful multi-million dollar career, you're supposed to hang it up. That's it. You can't be You can't be the tough guy. You're supposed to pay the tough guys. 
What's wrong with you? True. That's why you get security. Yeah, exactly. You get some you get some real shooters who can do it legally. So exactly. you know, you're doing too much, man. I couldn't I couldn't imagine wasting all that money. And he got like fines and some other stuff, so Oh yeah, um, they're about to suspend his ass. Yeah. Uh, psh, I mean, it's a good thing he's an actual shooter on the court, because otherwise he'd be in trouble. He'd be off the team. True. <laughs> I don't know. I don't think you know. I don't. I don't keep up with basketball too too much. I keep up more with uh, football and baseball. Actually, funny enough, I just got into baseball. I'm not even gonna act like I, I, you know, been watching it for a long period of time. Baseball used to be the most boring shit to me. Uh, Didn't they update the rules for baseball or like uh, something like that to make it faster? I have no fucking clue, honestly. I just like going uh, to the games. That's it. I'm gonna be honest with you. I don't watch any of the games on TV. I just watch them when I. When I'm like actually going to Dodger games because they're like forty five dollars for a ticket in the playoffs. It's super cheap. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Watching the Dodgers play and you live in LA is like it's a rite of passage. You know what I mean? Like, mm. like if you haven't gone, like you it just you just haven't gone. I guess like you don't you're not really a you're not really a, a sports aficionado. You can never say you like sports unless mm. until you go. Because like the the because the tickets are dirt cheap, it's like. Always, it doesn't matter if they're winning or losing. Unlike the Lakers, for some reason, like even the nosebleed seats be like hundreds of dollars and shit. And you're like, oh, yo, what the fuck? Kobe gone, oh, man. Like this, this all star player is gone. Like, there's no reason no, to watch got, this uh, team. They got LeBron. Who? Le LeBron James. Oh, the you second mean, best player of oh, all time. The the guy from Space Jam. Yo, don't don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. The guy from Space Jam is crazy. <laughs> <laughs> that is nuts. Uh, how long do you think it before they put Kobe Bryant in, in uh, Fortnite? By the way, uh, I don't know. I foresee they'd, that uh, happening, man. They'd have to. I don't think they'd do that. I see it. But, man. I see it. They got the bag, know. man. They could do it. <laughs> they'd have to deal with um his his wife. What's her name? Vanessa. Yeah, Vanessa. Man, she fine as hell. Um, respect to Kobe and uh, his his family, but his wife is fine as hell. Thank you. I, appreciate <laughs> I just said uh, I wanted to make that known. That's all. <laughs> it wasn't useful. I'm glad I know that. It wasn't, it wasn't useful. Yeah, yeah, you should Google some pictures, man. Okay. You want me to put them in the chat for you? No, no, no. You should... Please, no. <laughs> Please relax. Anyway, so. Um, yeah, man. Uh, over the last four months, I don't know if you caught the the last podcast episode. I uh, was talking a little bit about AI and, um, you know, the effect that that's having on the specifically the entertainment industry. Um, so I don't know if you're aware, but there's a uh, Writers Guild of America strike going on right now. So I talked a little bit about uh, that. I was aware of yeah. that. Yeah. So uh, apparently, uh, and this is the reason why it affects us, is uh, there one of the articles that I actually put in the chat this morning is, let's see, that uh, Warner Brothers has halted the production of Robert Pattinson's Batman spinoff. Um, I see. Yeah, so Matt Reeves is kind of a little upset about it. Uh, rightfully so, but I mean, you know, Colin Farrell's also not getting his uh, Penguin spinoff either uh, because of the strike. So for anybody that, you know, is not aware, uh the wga strike is essentially you know three i could break it down to probably like three of the biggest causes or like three of the biggest reasons and it's specifically um the payment scale and how that's actually i actually my girlfriend actually sent me a video the other day explaining majority of it but it's essentially the payment scale and how it's currently set to like early 2000s pre-streaming um basically writers get paid uh, per episode, you know, they're all on a contract basis. Um, she actually has more information on it than I do. Hold on, let me see if I can find this video she sent. Give me a second. Did you see? Oh, now that I, I'm thinking about the strike, did you know? Did you see the the one kid from uh, the Game Awards? The oh, the, the rabbi kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The he's yeah, there. About? He was at the. He was the at the writer's strike. strike? Yeah. What? <laughs> He was trolling uh, Hassan, the streamer. Oh, yeah. Trolling Hassan is, is so much fun. That's how you know you really made it, man. He's just trolling? Yeah, just trolling. Like, to be even acknowledged by Hassan is, you know, I think that's that's the way. I, I think that's a that's a good indicator of uh, how you know you made it. Mm, so When he reacts to you. Yeah, when he reacts to you, because then that just kind of folds over in itself, you know? Like, 
it starts steamrolling your career. Then you gotta, then you gotta uh, clap back at him. You know what I'm saying? Like, so mm. it just creates a never-ending cycle of oh, so we we doing this right now, and the internet just watches. So they love it. Yeah. So I'm actually gonna. I put it in the uh, podcast chat. Hold on. I'm gonna. I'm gonna play it for for the audience here. I'm actually going to respond to this because it gives me the opportunity to talk about something that I actually really care about. If you've been keeping up with the news and stuff, you know that the WGA, which is the Writers Guild of America, for anybody who writes in TV and film, they're on strike right now. They're on strike for a number of different reasons, all like necessary, but the main one I want to talk about is changes in the way that they're being paid. And I want to talk about it because it's important and also it's a thing that's been happening industry-wide for years. So the main way people get paid in the creative side of entertainment is through your day rate and through residuals. So everybody who works in entertainment, actors included, writers included, are work for hires essentially. So productions don't last forever. You are hired to work on a production for as long as it exists and then when it's done, it doesn't exist anymore. So if you are an actor or a writer or a director or a grip or somebody who works on set, you spend the majority of your time unemployed. The problem is that when a production ends, it doesn't stop generating revenue. Whenever a TV show is shown on TV, for example, ad companies will pay networks to show commercials in front of, at the end of, and in between a TV show. And they pay unreasonable amounts of money to the network to do that, especially if a show is popular. So something you got paid once to do is generating thousands of dollars for this network for years. For the longest time, anybody who worked on the creative side was not seeing any of that money. So all of the entertainment unions got together to negotiate residual pay. As an employee of that production, residual pay is your predetermined percentage of that extra generated revenue every time that thing is reused. If you worked on a TV show episode and that episode gets played a bunch of different times, every time the network gets ad revenue, they gotta give you a little percentage of it. It's been like that for years. And speaking from experience of somebody who has worked in the entertainment industry essentially my whole life, it is the only way to make a sustainable living. The main thing that really messed this whole system up was the rise of streaming because streaming services don't run ads. So they don't get paid off ad revenue. They get paid off of subscription. And because there's no precedent for how subscription money should be divvied up, only the executives of that company get that money. Yeah, you show up for work and you get paid for your work every day. But then if you don't work again for the rest of the year, which is very possible in this industry, you don't get paid again, period. And that's really messed up, especially since the only reason you sign up for a streaming service is to watch the shows and movies. And it's messed up because it tricks you as a consumer. If you're watching a show you like, you should be supporting that show and the people who made it. But you're not supporting a rich, greedy idiot. So no, we didn't go broke, but we have been getting robbed. And if the WGA strike doesn't go the way it needs to, it's only going to get worse. So that's a basic, simple explanation of the entire thing. Uh, shout out to TJ Online who had a really, really good explanation of it. Um, so my question, I guess, uh, to both you and the audience who's listening and who can comment, which by the way, if you're listening to the audio version of this, thank you very much. Make sure to rate us five stars. Uh, if you're watching the video version, leave your, uh, leave your comment down below what you think the solution is. So that's one of the big main reasons is that pay scale also trying to ai proof the industry i don't know how they're i don't know how the hell they're gonna pull that one off i can't can't even ai proof this show <laughs> so, <laughs> so so yeah man uh what, what are your thoughts about that i don't know if this it's is interesting new information I, or, or not i this is definitely new information for me because i've for a long time i didn't really know what the fuck was going on with this thing like i i didn't even to be honest i wasn't keeping up with this at all i mean, i think that video explained it really well like it's basically oh you're after you, the production you're no longer getting paid for your services basically yeah so and they're trying to figure out a way how they can include streaming within that revenue source which yeah i don't know how you would do that because they can't even yeah. figure out first of all then you have companies that are like disney plus like you don't know how many people watch the show until disney releases the information on it so how would you even 
tally how much you know production people should get paid after the fact you know and it's just yeah. like are you just including the people that directly worked on the production are you just including the actors producers like writers or are you also including the you know back in production accountants are you including the editors on that i think the editors if anything like because especially for something like disney where where they put something out prematurely and it screws up and then you know they they got to pay you twice as much because then you got to go back and re-edit the things that they screwed up because they left a coffee cup in a scene mm. so you know i don't i don't have a solution for that i definitely have a solution for ai proofing and it's to just fire everybody <laughs> so oh that's a good that's a great idea no it's it's really not i mean it's it's not it's not pro writer or anything like that i mean uh, i explained it a little bit in the previous episode i i was saying that you know instead of employing 20 30 40 writers or something like that for per episode for a tv series or something like that you could just have like five to ten people that are ai liaisons essentially and like they're the ones doing all the prompts they're the ones i mean this is just using chat gpt this is not even using anything like that is built specifically for creative because i mean just even coming up with topics for this episode I, I didn't generate all these links like i mean they came up on my google news feed sure but a couple of them i just had chat gpt pull up pull up a few articles that i thought were interesting it's the one who pulled up the mr beast chris thing uh, so, mm. you know, I, I'm not solely responsible for coming up with, uh, all of this stuff. I mean, who really is anymore? I mean, it's really the on-screen talent that kind of is responsible for a lot of that stuff anyway. So yeah. I don't know if you're spending a lot of time and money on a writing staff, you know, this is kind of a shortcut really. Like you could just hire these few people. Like, yeah, it's it doesn't a take the human element away from it, but yeah but it's an easy outsource and you know these companies love cutting corners yeah, they yeah. love that shit man they would produce these shows in china if they could they fucking live and breathe <laughs> that cutting corner shit yeah so you know they want to I, I could see how the uh uh the industry would want to go more like the apparel route like because you know nike having things that are made in the u.s is far more expensive than having shoes made in china and bangladesh you know what i mean yeah it's just, so it's just super easy it's yeah. cheaper you don't have to deal with all that bullshit exactly so i don't see why they wouldn't try to implement this somehow i don't i don't know how they're gonna this this strike is probably gonna go for a while honestly. oh 100 percent. just just based off of that one significant thing so I don't and the legis the legislation is probably going to take even longer. Oh yeah, cuz they're just, just now like figuring out <laughs> They're just like major companies are just now figuring out what is this chat GPT GPT thing and why is it helping people write resumes? Like, you know what I mean? Like yeah. this shit is about to put hell of people either out of work or in jeopardy because they don't they don't want to adapt to it. They'd rather just complain about it. So, mm. you know, I, I don't know. I made that shit work for me. I had that shit write, oh, my, write several of my cover letters, you know what I mean? Like, And then it just makes me realize, like, oh, you know what? Why am I applying to jobs? I, I, I fucking hate having a job. But I also need money, so, you know, it is what it is. It's a double-edged sword, unfortunately. So, One thing that I thought was interesting from the video that we just watched is he said the cut based on subscription, right? Or something to that effect. Right. And I was wondering how they were going to get any of these companies to ever get like a cut of that uh, subscription money. Mm. Do you have any ideas? Like, I don't, I couldn't. Even uh, see it. No, because I, I have no answer for that only because the subscriptions vary all the time. So how much of Netflix's profit, if they make any, st I, I still don't, I don't even know if Netflix is actually making profit. Hold on, let me, let's Google this. I think they're let's ask Google. Let's ask Google. I'm not going to pretend to know. Is Netflix profitable yet? <laughs> let's just see. Let's just ask Google. Does Netflix turn a profit? Netflix is a profitable company, which nets profit. Uh, their profits were $5.1 billion in 2021. So that's as of the writing of this article is February 18, 2023. So if they are profitable... <laughs> You gotta start divvying out that money. Now, the real question is, how do you divide it up? Because executives obviously are gonna wanna take a stupid amount, just like they do in any industry, because they're, you know, higher up, obviously. So, I don't know. Yep. 
then that gets into a whole addition that you have to add to the strike too. It's just like, how much, how, how much are executives allowed to be paid? You know? Yeah. So I don't, I don't know, man, it's going to be a very odd situation. I don't see an end to it anytime soon, but then again, smarter, smarter people than me will figure it out. So, Oh, undoubtedly. Yeah. Some random low level fucking YouTuber and podcasters are not going to figure this out. You know? I'm sure yeah, we're just knows. here to report on honestly we're just yeah. here to say surface level takes and, truly truly and then maybe give like a, a you know racial remark here and there you know that's that's basically all we do so <laughs> you think we get replaced by a fuck yeah man I, I was trying to i was i was watching previous episodes that we did and i was trying to get enough uh i need at least one hour of you speaking consecutively in order to like ai clone your voice but i don't have enough so hello <laughs> yeah you said what yeah <laughs> you think i'm trying to, you think i'm trying to i'm trying to work on this every hell we no. might need to re we might need to renegotiate <laughs> nah, <I don't>, <laughs> what are you talking about you still gonna get paid the same amount what are you talking about see that's the, <laughs> the I, ai voice shit is crazy i think that's the difference have you heard like hey yeah we were listening to it the other day the the michael jackson joy with the weekend oh yeah. yeah that shit is crazy man like come on down i think honestly if you're even in situations like that, like if you weren't available for an episode and I AI'd your voice or even both of ours and just created an episode that way, we should still get paid the same amount. But then again, we're the owners of the show. We can dictate. I mean, if we had editors oh, or yeah. anything like that, we'd still have to pay them their regular amount. So I don't know. Maybe they just allow instead of hiring 30, 40 writers, just hire 10 to 20 writers and then let them use AI. Just let them go crazy. I think that'll be yeah. I, yeah i think that's a solution just let them go crazy with ai like i think there needs to be a um i don't know the hierarchy of like who's responsible for hiring those specific writers but maybe there needs to be a, a person in between that that handles all of the like ai stuff and let them oh, undoubtedly yeah and let the writers go crazy with ai if they wanted to i'm sure they could get a lot more i mean but then again they're gonna find a way to abuse that but you know they're gonna be like why why would i work hard thinking about ideas that i could just literally just have chat gpt prompt some ideas for me it's like yeah you could mm. but remember if you're not flushing out these ideas and not producing good content essentially it's like we could replace you with a robot like at that any, is crazy at any moment i mean it it kind of entices people to work a little bit harder but it also entices them to work smarter i guess i would say i don't know maybe yeah because if i was if i was producing a show which you know for my own company like one of my clients she's she's a doctor who needs to come up with you know ideas for you know creating what she wants it to be viral content and i told her like listen that's not what we're aiming for but she doesn't want to hear any of that but whatever mm. that's a different conversation for a different day um i just have chat gpt come up with 10 cool ideas for her and she's like oh my god you're amazing i'm like yeah sure okay i just let I just, <laughs> yeah i just let the robot do it because she's not gonna listen to me she's gonna listen to you know uh chad gpt, chad GPT. but she doesn't know it's chad gpt she thinks it's me coming up with these ideas i don't want to take the time to do medical research and all this other stuff like no absolutely not let something that can cite medical journals on the internet i don't have access to this vast central intelligence that is the internet you know what i mean like i can't instantly google something in my brain unfortunately so yeah let the yeah. machines do it man i'm not <laughs> i'm not doing that shit but i also uh this is something i said in the video um if you are worried about your job being replaced by AI, how important was your job? Uh, how important were you to your job? You know what I mean? Like, no. That's a different question. Yeah, because if you can be replaced that easily, then, you know, the human element must not have been that important for that specific task or duty. Hmm. It's just that simple. So. Well, you can start saying that about a lot of things that aren't, like, you know, super essential, right? Would you let a robot perform certain like brain surgery on you or something like that open heart surgery oh no no i'm talking about i was talking about shit that's not super important but you know what i mean the human like think about it like this in <laughs> detroit become human right you just have some fucking robot you know be your server or some shit yeah true in japan they're already like some people in japan you can just order your shit via you know what i mean a tablet or whatever just like a, a little screen right now, was that a person's job previously? 
Yeah. To take orders? Yeah, to take yeah, orders. Yeah. But, but here's the thing. Your job really wasn't that important anyway. <laughs> like, that's crazy. It's, it's not. Taking orders is not... Yeah, no. Like, if there's no need for a human element there, it's like, who cares? Now, my server at my barista at Starbucks or whatever, yeah, I'm, he might be cool for, you know, a little conversation here and there. But he's also slower than a robot can can make coffee. And sometimes that, that nuance is a little important because you're creating connections with customers that could potentially come back. So... Mm. You know, not every every single job that can be replaced by robots should be replaced by robots. So I don't oh, know. Definitely McDonald's for sure. McDonald's, you Burger so? King, yeah, 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 yeah. This Chick Fil A specifically over here in Encino, yeah, yeah. Replace those people with robots. But every other Chick Fil A is good though. So. And what happened over there? Oh man, they be <laughs> they got McDonald's employees working at that Chick Fil A or something, man. Like. Those are the most least helpful people I've ever seen in my entire life. Like every time, Damn. every time me and my girlfriend go over there, it's it's always some type of problem. They always forgetting something. They or they're always giving our orders away to somebody else. Like you know, they just I need corporate to come. I, I need corporate to come and take a look at this this location specifically. You need so, HR. I need HR, man. HR. I, I need through? they to come through here. See, this is very interesting. I would have thought by now they would have had secret shoppers. Cause like when I was working in retail, that was something that we were always afraid of was secret shoppers. Like you would never know who was from corporate. Uh, they would come in order, you know, really complicated or very simple things like anything. It's just random. And then next thing you know, your store manager comes up to you, taps you on the shoulder. Hey, uh, Chris, let me, let me talk to you in the back real quick. And you already, you thinking like, oh shit, like what did I do? Yeah, we had a secret shopper the other day, man. And uh, the person specifically asks you for two buffalo sauces. Now, I know that's not difficult for you, Chief. I know that's not difficult. Why did you give them barbecue? Because that's not the sauce that they asked for. Chris, I, I, we, we've gone over this a couple of times, man. You gave a lady a, a medium fry, and she asked for a large fry. And all you did yeah. was take the fries that she already had. She watched you. She watched you do it because we got it on camera because she was complaining about it. You took the medium fry and put it in a large container and then gave that to her. You didn't change the fries. You didn't give her no new fries. Chris, you know what? I, honestly, as your store manager, I don't need to come down on you. Okay, you should be coming down on yourself. All right. You know you're not doing a good job. Why are you Why are you offering customer service like this? See, look, I don't want to have to do this to you, but corporate is kind of breathing on my neck, and I don't need them on my ass. So you know what? I'm going to go ahead and uh, let you know you're down to four days a week. Okay? Uh, we, we can hey. put you back up to five, but I just need to see some improvement. Why are we not getting it? Like, that was something that I was always afraid of, you know, especially working in retail. It was just a never ending fear, like all the time. You never knew what was gonna happen. Where are my secret shoppers at, man? Where where are these corporations coming down? They need to make sure they got a good product, man. I'm tired of, tired of going to Chick-fil-A and getting Cindy and fucking Cynthia's half-ass fucking smirk. Man, you should have seen it. <laughs> I asked this man. I asked this girl for some sauce the other day, man, and she didn't even turn around and look at me. She just grabbed him, was just like, "Here." She was just like, "Here you go," and expected me to just snatch him out her hand. Girl, you better turn around and look at me in my eyes and say, "It's my pleasure," because it is. Wow. It is your pleasure that you were serving me, ma'am. I don't have okay. to. I don't have to come to this establishment. Just know. I mean, that's not really going to affect their bottom line or anything. But yeah. can, the point is, you know, I went on a tangent. The point is, your job can definitely be replaced by AI, for sure. Oh, okay. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, one for lady sure. Yeah, 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 absolutely. And replace some of the staff. Everybody doesn't have to be replaced. You know what I'm saying? Just replace some of them. And that's how you know. Mm -hmm. If you're not doing a good job, you're not an asset to that specific company or something like that. You're not, uh, you know, getting customer surveys all the time talking about oh this person is great that person is amazing you know what i'm saying like we can replace you with a robot and somebody else could do the management with the robots you know what i'm saying like there has to be some type of human element to that so mm. now one area i really 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 would like some ai like to have its own industry have its own thing is going to be driving i think having oh. autonomous cars and autonomous lanes specifically only for autonomous cars would really really help um but then you have to also introduce the human element and the stupidity of that like just because there's an ai lane and ai cars driving those to think that people aren't gonna like organic humans oh my god why am i saying it this way that people <laughs> aren't going to try and jump in those lanes you're gonna fuck the whole system up you know what i mean like they need to, i don't know 
I feel like that's something that definitely needs to exist and needs to be regulated very heavily. But we have nothing but old people that come up with legislation and shit like that. So it's it's kind of pointless. So they don't even yeah. they don't they can't even spell AI correctly, man. Like this is this is ridiculous. So plus I think um the technology needs to be developed further in order for that to be a thing. Yeah, the, obviously right now it's okay, but you know what I mean? There's been accidents and things like that with the AI driving. Yeah. No, but that's because human elements. You know, somebody swerve in front of it, and, you know, like cuz a computer's going to be programmed to do certain things that, you know, that it's allowed to do or the roads may be fucked up or something like that. You know what I mean? Like like there's always some sort of like, oh, a human fucked this up. That's why it's not the way that it's supposed to be. Yeah, potentially. Yeah. So, you know, but I don't really, I don't know. I don't see an issue to it, but, you know, only time will tell, man. Only time will tell. The only thing is, if it gets any further, uh, it'll, it might be too far along to regulate properly. Because it's already gotten to a point where, like, AI was literally just a new version of Google with ChatGPT 2.5, I think it was. Um, hmm. That was literally just an advanced Google search but smarter it was i explained it a little differently in uh the previous episode i was like yeah it's the most reasonable person that you've ever talked to you know like you ask it a question it'll give you a direct answer uh if you need specifications for certain things it'll it'll kind of switch around its answer specifically to meet your criteria cool no problem dope but as it got even further and got to 3.0 and 3.1 and 3.5 that's when it was like, oh, we can utilize this in other areas and other people now creating a mock of, I mean, chat GPT is not the first open AI. I mean, it is specifically by that group that created it, but you know, now you have WMG and Sony music trying to shut down AI music. And some of this AI music is fire, bro. Like there's this crazy that your artists can't just copy that. Like if, if Drake really wanted to, I don't think it's I don't think it's Drake. I think it's like a lot of his representation that's probably making these decisions for him um, on his behalf, really. I think Drake is probably yeah. cool with it. I think Drake is probably cool with AI because he's like, oh, well, I can just perform this song and technically I own it now. So, yeah, you really could just do a cover of your own AI song. And it's like, boom, there you go. You technically own it because I mean, how many people are really going to take the time to do copyright protection on their ai copy of drake's voice but then again drake doesn't even i mean drake i think he owns his masters right yeah he does yeah so it's really up to him at any point any time you know to to be able to say oh i i care about this specific thing or i don't or something like that like but i could see for artists that don't own their masters or don't basically don't own their voice these record labels could essentially just clone you, <laughs> clone your voice. What they need you for? Yeah, they already got enough time of you talking in interviews and singing songs and shit like that. Like, you know, we got AI Michael Jackson, man. We rose Michael Jackson from the dead, bro. Come on now, it's crazy, <laughs> crazy. Just to get a feature on the weekend song, like get out of here. <laughs> so I don't know, man. It's it's a slippery slope, and once it starts, who knows if we're ever gonna be able to. Uh, I equated it to putting toothpaste back in the in the bottle. Mm. Which is never going to be able to do it, man. I think with artists specifically, it's going to be scary. Because if, let's say, you get a record deal. Right. And basically, you don't do, you don't perform to what they wanted. Or you don't give the money back that you got on the advance. They could just, realistically, right? They could just be like, you know what? I think we're going to start AIing your voice. And we're going to start making money off your back. Right. Yeah. Because you have to pay. You still have to pay us back. So what are you going to say about that? Yeah. It costs Unless us. It costs us nothing to be able to do that. Exactly. So, man, that's tough. That's going to be tough. But hey, you should have been in a better industry. Time to hit up Chick-fil-A. Hey, you should have made they, better music. Yeah, you you should have gave us our money back. Yeah, I guess. Uh huh. Not only that, I, I hear Chick-fil-A hiring. <laughs> that <is crazy. laughs> that's crazy. I'm just saying, man. So you know, we it's a long way to go, man. I'm excited about it though. I I never see it getting worse from here, but it's I think that's the problem is it's never gonna go backwards. We're never gonna have it to where like, hey, remember AI and how that was? Like, we're never gonna be at that at that moment ever again. Oh yeah. So yeah. 
it's, it's only gonna, gonna progress yeah further and further. it's, it's gonna get crazy because i'm i'm actually very excited about the creative aspects of it so you know mm. but maybe because i'm more of a creative person and i have i mean if somebody wanted to ai my voice which why would you want to do that um aren't you already doing that shut up <laughs> i'm doing that for Bro, this episode you. currently you the motherfucker doing it <laughs> i got two editors doing it too hello yeah you just not, hey. no way Lee Boy is doing your shit. Nah, it's not. It's not Lee Boy. Lee Boy's doing the other stuff. Lee Boy's the oh, liaisons. Okay. Yeah, I basically have a hierarchy. So, uh, well, this actually brings me to my next thing about the the new company I started, which I didn't intend to talk about this on the podcast, but essentially I'm leveraging my YouTube channel. So I had a conversation with the because uh, now that I'm doing Lyft driving, I had a conversation with this guy who actually works at YouTube. And he was telling me how they're trying to utilize AI tools to uh, essentially blow up smaller channels and stuff like that that have a consistent following. So if you get 200 views on like 10 videos, right? Let's just use 10 for an example. I think he gave me a, like a higher number, but I'm going to simplify it. You're getting consistent 200 views, the same people commenting on stuff like that. They're going to put a lot of your stuff in recommended based off of yeah. those specific subjects. So as you know youtube is supposed to be intended but because less than half of a percent of the current active youtube channels on youtube have less than a thousand subs they want to change that because they want to be able to have access to more capital and more advertisements going out mm. but they can't really make more money off of people that are not getting views yeah just because 2.1 billion people upload one youtube video a day you know not including large content creators that actually make money off of the platform that's not really going to help them so they're trying to figure out a way how can we get these people to essentially gain more market share so that way they have more views coming in yeah. so they can potentially get more advertised dollars which makes sense but also at the same time what the fuck yeah. <laughs> what the fuck so i don't i don't know where that's going to go anyway so the point to that is that is at a certain point they're going to be able to essentially blow up your channel if they wanted to so they're utilizing youtube shorts and their ai algorithm they're trying to get more and more like tiktok of course but yeah, yeah and they're i don't know man it's it's gonna get all over the place pretty soon but he was telling me that you utilizing these ai tools have not only not laid people off but like they've hired more people because of it like because they're able to save time they're able to save more money so they're able to get mm. results faster and then get more ad dollars and the roi is is essentially faster than if they were to just do nothing so i find it very interesting man so one of my lee boy is going to be my like he's in the hierarchy of like hey i need you to manage some of these other things so you know he's, oh, he's congratulations, he, lee boy. thank you thank you thank you man no you, you say congratulations to me okay oh, <laughs> i'm the one who came up with this idea so essentially i'm leveraging the fact that i'm in the top one percentile of youtubers which you know congratulations to me I, all around thank you thank you i worked really hard to be here okay so <laughs> because i'm in that top one percentile it's easier for me to offer my social media services to companies and people now my hang up right now is uh i have trouble going from offering a person a service compared to a company a service you know what i mean the pitch is different so mm. so if i'm offering you you know say you're you know ex you know famous youtuber or famous tech talk to tiktoker or whatever and i'm like oh yeah yeah i can help you build your social media following blah 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 you know a person is more likely to say yes than a company so i'm trying to figure out like how i can do that and that's where like hiring bots essentially hiring you know management which is somebody like lee boy and how they can essentially turn out more content for me because i was watching gary v of course he's always the one putting mm. me on of course you mr. know vaynerchuk yeah mr vaynerchuk always put me on creating content is a better way to advertise your business compared to actually making advertisements Mm. I don't know if that makes any sense, but essentially making a viral TikTok will get you more people that could potentially book you, that could potentially ask for your services, that could potentially want to reach out to you to work with you compared to 
just going from store to store saying, hey, I offer social media marketing services. Yeah. So, and so that's, that's like the difference between a billboard and a door to door salesman. Exactly. Yeah. One may, may be a little bit more effective, but the other sees way more people. Yeah. So, you know, and that's kind of, kind of what I'm doing. So I have two clients. I'm working on a third right now. And honestly, this shit is kind of easy. <laughs> so I'm oh, starting. Yeah? yeah. So I started my own company and, uh, really the only thing left to do is to start posting. That's it. Because even if I don't say, I don't get any clients from any of my, like, you know, hard work of, you know, email marketing and like going on LinkedIn and all this other stuff, just by creating content, I will make money. Once yeah, I get past an like, in yeah, itself. exactly. Once I get past the first thousand subs, I, and now that I know that YouTube is really trying to push like, Hey, if you're at a thousand subs, we're going to, we're going to push you even harder now. That's even better for me. So, exactly. you know, I'm really looking forward to it, man. I got, got a, my girlfriend says I have a bright future ahead of me. Now, I don't know if that's because, you know, I'm just that guy, but, which I am, you know, obviously. Uh, okay. I, I mean, to be honest, I am. <laughs> I definitely am. There's no reason why I'm not. Have you ever heard anybody that goes through the type of shit that I go through just for existing? No, nah, I didn't expect you to come with that YouTube story either. Yeah, I yeah. <laughs> that's not what I expected. See, listen, man, I'm just telling you, I'm, I'm the guy. It is like I'm, I'm just uh, confused where you find these people. Yeah, I'm just I don't know, man. I don't, I don't know either. <laughs> <laughs> I'm clearly one of the strongest warriors out here, bro. Uh, clearly, mm. because I I got I'm going through really? stuff. Hey, I'm going through stuff nobody else is going through, man. Like I was even talking to my girlfriend about this. She was like, "Yeah, I don't know if you have bad luck or you just have like trials in front of you that you need to do all the time." I'm like, "Yeah, I don't know either." So you know mix of both yeah honestly like what type of main character goes through all of this character development and doesn't you know you either turn out like aaron yeager or you turn out like goku oh yeah yeah <laughs> that's Maybe. pretty you only you only have two options those are some crazy ass options <laughs> so you could be like yagami no hey so i want to be like that yeah definitely not definitely not so you know man i'm just having a good time just you know being creative just making stuff and you know, honestly, the more the more people I get involved in it, I'm, I'm going to start treating it like an MLM. What the fuck is that? So multi-level marketing. So, you know, uh, oh. a pyramid scheme. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to make one of those. Except, uh, you know, I was doing some I was doing research. Do you know what makes pyramid scams illegal and multi-level networking actually legal in this country? No, I don't. you offer a service or a product. So essentially, for those who don't know, a pyramid scheme is a company or a group of people that will pay you based off of how many people that you recruit to sign up for their services. So let's say I'm person A, right? And I have a plug to like get insurance. Uh, you're fine. <laughs> uh, I have a plug to basically like get you your insurance salesman certificate, right? And I tell you, yeah, Plank, you can get, you can sell insurance, uh, but I need you to take this course for $300. And you're like, oh man, that's, you know, I can sell, I can sell insurance or whatever. And you can make however exponential amounts of money by selling those insurance services. Or I tell you, hey, if you recruit three people and make them each pay $300, I get a cut of that, but you get like, you know, you also get commission based off of that. And then they can either hire more people to sell more services to, or they can sell the services themselves. So mm. essentially the difference between a pyramid scheme and, and an MLM is you now offer a product or service. So that's what makes them legal compared to not legal. So I'm thinking like, oh, in my industry, I'm offering social media and marketing services. Why don't I just hire contractors and then tell them, hey, you can get a commission off of whatever the client ends up booking if you find me more clients. Mm. So, you know, of course, like who's going to turn down an extra 500, an extra thousand dollars by, you know, oh, I, I know this person and they're looking for social media services and they're looking for, you know, content production services, and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, oh, okay, cool. I'll cut you in for like shit at that point you know since i'm the owner of the company i can promise them whatever i want i'm like oh yeah let me give you 25 percent 
25% of a thousand dollars is 250 bucks. Who's not going to turn down an extra 250 bucks and they're a contract worker in Los Angeles? Nobody. Them Nobody. niggas need that money. So, especially with the writer strike going on right now, you're not working, you're not doing nothing. <laughs> so, you know, I figure it's a good time. It's a good time. So, now all I got to do is, uh, the current steps I'm on is just creating a new domain for everything, having the website going, which I really don't even need the website. It's really just to offer people, like, validation, I guess, to, like, feel like, a, mm. oh, yeah, this is this is clearly this guy is legit because he has a website that's what that means yeah so you know because you send them to an instagram page they're gonna be like oh instagram like what else is this but then again i don't really have to do too much because instagram is not you know a main platform for finding you know like you're not gonna increase market share by posting on instagram reels it's just not happening tiktok and linkedin for sure because you know you're trying to target business owners and Honestly, the only pushback I've really had, which I actually have a rebuttal to it, is some people are like, oh, I don't I don't like TikTok or I don't believe in, you know, TikTok and like all this security stuff and blah, 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 blah. Why would I post to social media? Well, why do I care? The market doesn't care. The people you're trying to reach, the customers that you're trying to reach, they don't care if you don't care for social media. Mm. So you may, you may, you know, feel like TikTok is against your principles or whatever, the customers that you're trying to reach don't care. So, seriously, yeah. Like, why the fuck should I? So, makes no difference to me whether you use my services or not. So, mm. it'd be helpful, but you know, I'm not gonna. I can't force you. So, you know, it's just my idea that I came up with. So, and there it is. Yeah. So then, uh, you know, when it gets later on, and I can, I can put the homies on, you know, which is why I kind of. You know, need to push you to edit a little bit more. You know, give you some commissions. You know what I'm saying? Mm. Yeah, yeah. Break my homie off some bread. That's not part of the Patreon. Which, by the way, if you guys want to financially support the show, so that way we can keep you going, make sure to go to patreoncom slash Um Or I think it's just Canon Culture, right? Yeah, we got the rights I to that. It's just can't, yeah. yeah, we got the rights what? to that now. Why would we not have the? Yeah. Why would we not have the rights to it? Yeah, I don't know. Some AI probably took it. I don't know. True. Happens all the time, man. These things happen all the time. So, I'm on that shit right now. Yeah. AI. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. How would I know? How would I know if it's AI or not? And having it, never having an AI editor is crazy, by the way. Like I, I, yeah, I was kind of dabbling that, with that with uh, After Effects, and woo wee, my boy. Let me tell you, <laughs> ain't no way. You're in the lab, <laughs> man. I was in the lab for like hours, just just messing with it, man. That's how I got uh, the last episode out so quickly. Which, you know, you're about to find out on this episode now that we have separate audio tracks. Oh, it's about to go crazy. <laughs> so, yeah. Plank about to have his own clips, finally. Thank goodness. Oh, shit. Yeah, it's about to go. AI Plank is going to go nuts. <laughs> <laughs> about to make that boy say some wild stuff. Hey, yeah? Yeah. Huh? What were you what saying? What do you mean by that? With... Anyway, guys, thank you for listening to today's episode. That's I, I don't got nothing else. Plank, you want to... Did you want to... Shout out to the AI Take It By Job, hey, man. Thank you hey, so much. But you're still getting paid it. the same amount, though. Yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. But he's taking my job. I don't even need to clock in. Nope, not at all. <laughs> AI is going to do all that. Isn't a producer not producing? Yeah. That's Plank. That's the AI producer. That's the man. AI producer, man. You paid him. Yeah. You paid him the same amount. Shout out to him, man. That's great. That's great. I love it. Um, I, got, I do got a video I got to show you that I saw Agent Watch. Um, mm. it was, it was funny cause he was streaming and, uh, he was reacting to it and it's, uh, Drake looking for his AI ghostwriter. Mm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I gotta, I gotta throw that in the chat. I think you'll find that really funny, but yeah, that's going to be it. Make sure to rate to today's episode five stars. Let us know what you guys' thoughts and opinions are. Um, follow us on social media. All of those links are going to be in the description. Blank, it was a it was an honor as as always it was man. a pleasure yeah it yeah. was a pleasure you know i had this job for a long time <laughs> bro uh, you're not losing your job yet <laughs> yet <laughs> yo yet is crazy <laughs> just say, make sure to stay on your toes that's all that's all oh, that's yeah. all it is man i'm gonna start working extra hard don't worry y'all yeah. i need my job okay. i need this all i need right. to feed my family yeah. thank you so much for listening See, he says that now but if if this show was making hundreds and thousands of dollars he would have a different tune for sure I'd be clocking in at 9 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> Not clocking in at 9 a.m. So, all right. 
But anyway, we want to thank you guys for listening. Make sure to keep it canon. You're losing your job, by the way. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I knew it. <laughs>